Hello everyone. Welcome to a learn era. In today's session we want to learn about talk tube. So friends in this session we learn different modules. First is what is nut runner. Second is why it is used. Third is where it is used. Fourth is selecting nut runners. Fifth is applications. After that we discuss a live talk tube project. So first one is what is nut runner. Nut runners and nut drivers are tools used for tightening nuts. By definition, nut drivers are purely mechanical hand tools, while nut runners are pneumatic, electric or hydraulic power tools. Pneumatic nut runners are powered by compressed air and vary in terms of air fittings and air consumption. Electric nut runners use a DC controller as a power supply. Next is, large nut runners systems are designed to be mounted in a fixed position, usually on an assembly line. Second is, where it is used. Find the right tightening solution for automotive final assembly plants, drivetrain production and tiered supplies. Next point is rework and recalls. Third is quality and durability at assembly lines problem. Dot for that, we find some solutions. See in next slide. Smart production tools provide error proofing and operator feedback to avoid rework and recall. Electric nut runners, cordless assembly tools and fixture. Assembly solutions are built to withstand the demand of high production assembly lines. Our extensive product portfolio provides the most efficient solutions for safety critical, quality critical and functional assemblies. Tool have increased productivity, improved quality and refused downtime. Our latest assembly nut runners continue to raise industry expectations with class leading repeatability and durability. Here we can see selecting nut runners. First is selecting nut runners requires an analysis of available features. For example, integral transducers are often used to provide feedback to the controller. Second is torque levels are displayed on an analog meter with a needle or a digital readout with a numeric or alphanumeric display. Third is cycle counters track the number of tightening cycles and display the results. Fourth is sliding spindles extend and retract during rotation. Handheld nut runners often include a reaction bar or stabilizer. To facilitate ease of use, fifth is fixture devices often include a mounting plate or other hardware. In this slide, we see a applications of nut runner. First is because they provide tight torque control. Nut runners and nut drivers are used in a variety of precision fastening and assembly applications. Second is typically larger nut runner systems are interfaced with network and statistical process control software for quality control and monitoring. Third is. Some nut runners are used on automotive or appliance assembly lines. Fourth is, others are designed for turning, tightening, tapping, reaming, beveling, and expanding applications. Let's start a industrial project. The project process start with customer RFQ. The customer required a specific product so the customer send a RFQ to multiple suppliers. The supplier make a concept and send to customer. So in this project customer wants to build a assembly in less time with proper talk. This is assembly part. In this assembly two parts are there. These two parts are assembled using nut and bolts. First part is axle and second part is rim. Supplier think and make a proper concept for this operation. In design concept, supplier make a 3D design of top tube and send to the customer. The customer check whole design and to verify the requirements is fulfilled or not. If requirements are fulfilled then the customer approve the concept. When customer is approved then the designer make a final design. In this slide, image shows part holding fixture point 1 STV need the part holding fixture. This is a part. On this part we apply 3 to 1 principle. This part is properly rest, locate and clamp for performing tightening operation. When we design this fixture we know about working environment that is height, width, length. After that you need to check access of tool. If tool access is done then we go to design a top tube. About top tube we see in next slide. This is a top tube. The part of the top is a hanger. With the help of hanger the top tube is fixed in upper rail. The green part is pipe structure. To add some reinforcement for strengthening purpose. Here we add linear bush for smooth up and down movement. Here we add bearing mechanism to rotate our tool. This a DC tool. Here we can see spring balancer. The tool can be turned up and down with the help of spring balancer. We use MS pipe, the material of hanger is EN8. And we also use standard parts like a spring balancer. Linear bush, bearing, and hardware. In this slide we learn about movement of top tube. This image shows the movement of tool. The operator can easily handle this tool. 
and without any restrictions while performing tightening operation. The LM rod is slide in linear bush. So the tool can easily go up and down. And we use bearing mechanism for rotator tool. So rotation is also done. In this slide, the image shows the arrangement of part holding fixture and top tube. The top tube is fixed in upper guide rail. The fixture is rest on flow. After that we create a DAP drawing, see in next slide. In this slide we see DAP. It means design approval review. So we create DAP drawing. In this drawing we give all dimensions of the top tube like a height, width, length, working height and we also explain to customer technical specifications of top tube. After DAP we create manufacturing drawings of individual parts. Here we can see dimensions and tolerance. Here this part is fixed on top tube, material of this part is AN8. For increasing hardness, we apply a hardening process on it. After hardening HRC is 38 to 42. Now we see L block drawing, we give all dimensions with tolerance, which is required for manufacturing. The position of L block is here on top tube. This L block helps to hold the tool and also hold bearing housing. Material of L block is mild steel. So complete all parts drawings same as above. After that in factory we manufacturing all parts within tolerance. In manufacturing process simultaneously we check that part and make a dimensional inspection report. See in next slide. In QC report we have number of fields. Date. Part number. Part name. Drawing number. Vendor name. Quantity. Now here we can see serial number, parameters which we want to check, drawing zone. Minimum and maximum tolerance. Which instrument is used? Instrument serial number. Actual dimensions. Remarks and comment. In bottom of report. Signature of the person who checked the part. Signature of the witnessed. This report is for individual part. So put all dimensions in this report. If all dimensions is achieved as per drawing then approve that part. Hereafter dimensional checking report is done. We build a assembly of checked part. And again check whole assembly using coordinate measuring machine. The CMM machine compare 3D part with actual manufactured part. And generate a report. In this report all assembly dimensions is checked. Reporters show whole assembly is as per 3D part. It means our product is good and ready to use. In this slide we see in first image 3D design of top tube. And in second and third image we see actual manufactured top tube. Now last process is fixture delivery. In this process our assembly is packed in wooden box and delivered to customer. Customer is installed this fixture on site and use it. This is complete process of project execution. I hope you will enjoy this session and add some knowledge about Nutrunner. If you want to learn more about Katia software, gauges, fixture, SPM, then visit our website www.alearnera.com. Thank you.